probably heard about Uniwide, the number one retail store chain in the Philippines during the 80s and the 90s. But did you know that Uniwide of an organized fraud? It was just recently that Mr. Gao, the owner of Uniwide, got hold of the official documents about the liquidation of the company and had come to realize that among the people he trusted. Worse, the goal of the supposed rehabilitation of Uniwide was more to liquidate the company than to put the company back on its feet. Uniwide was doing good in business during the 80s and the 90s. It was the only supermarket that had 60 checkout counters full of customers. The store sizes were a minimum of one hectare per store, with gross sales reaching 15 billion pesos annually. In fact, the recorded sales of Uniwide from 1994 to 1998 are the following. 1994, almost 12 billion pesos. 1995, almost 13 billion pesos. 1996, more than 15 billion pesos. 1997, almost 15 billion pesos also. And 1998, almost 8 billion pesos. So, if Uniwide was doing good in business during all that time, what happened? that it suddenly stopped operating. Uniwide Holdings Inc. was incorporated on September 15, 1994, and Mr. Gao placed almost all his businesses and properties under Uniwide Holdings. Brought in about 100 people, including the controller, vice president for finance, asset manager who were mostly from SGV and a board of directors to take full control of the company. I have here the papers that show who were the incorporators of Uniwide Holdings Inc. I'll just read some of them. Mr. Jimmy Gao is the chairman and chief executive officer, founder of Uniwide Group of Companies. Mr. Jaime Cabangis is the Chief Financial Officer of Uniwide Holdings. Mr. Cabangis was also a partner of Sisip Gores Velayo and Company, SGV, where he worked for 21 years. Next is Mr. Bienvenido Arau III, Head of Retail Operations and Executive Vice President of Uniwide Holdings. Dr. Bernardo M. Villegas is a non-executive director of Uniwide Holdings. Ms. Corazon Rey is the AVP of Treasury of Uniwide Holdings and spent four years as a senior auditor of SGV. Susan Legarde, also from SGV. This includes former Prime Minister Mr. Cesar Virata as part of the board of directors. Also brought in financial advisor George Go who was the president of Equitable Bank during that time. And Cesar Buenaventura, who was the brother of Rafael Buenaventura, who was the governor of the Central Bank during President Erap Estrada's administration. Cesar Buenaventura is also the director and chairman of Mitsubishi Hitachi and Buenaventura, a chosen partners, and he was also a director of DMCI and formerly of PAL, Ayala Corporation, and Philippine National Bank. Uniwide became a public listed company in 1996 and attracted 27,000 investors that subscribed to the Uniwide Holdings Initial Public Offering or IPO in 1997 raising 4.3 billion pesos in new capital. We have here the list of the 27 local and international investors, which include international banks like Citibank of North America, Standard Chartered Bank, Bank National de Paris, Hong Kong Shanghai Bank, OCBC Bank Singapore, 
Indosus Bank, ING Bank, ING Baring, Bank de Luxembourg, and many more. Sisip Gores Velayo, or SGV, is the auditor of Uniwide Holdings. According to the report of SGV, the IPO proceeds or the 4.3 billion pesos were deposited in a custodian bank it did not name. Issue number one. Is it normal for an auditing firm not to mention the name of the custodian bank in the audit report? Mr. Gao said that this custodian bank was probably equitable bank as he had been dealing with a financial institution for 35 years already at that time. Also, all the money that was pouring in from the IPO was being deposited to Equitable Bank. The sales of Uniwide from 1994 to 1997 were around 12 to 15 billion pesos. Issue number two. Why then in February 1998 bounced the checks of Uniwide worth only 30 million pesos? One month after selling almost 15 billion, the company was already short of 30 million pesos? Where was the 4.3 billion from the IPO that was deposited supposedly? According to Mr. Gao, this was the start of the demolition plan to make it appear that the company was already bankrupt. Right after this, took over 35 branches of Ecology Bank without paying a single centavo. In the same year, 1998, were already preparing a rehabilitation plan to be submitted to the SEC. Mr. Gao said, convinced him that this was the way to get the SEC to protect his company, which is the reason and the only reason why Mr. Gao agreed with the plan. Issue number three. Why should a company apply for a rehabilitation plan if it's still selling and performing well in business and has money worth of 4.3 billion pesos in the bank from its investors. According to Mr. Gao, the inventory for all his stores was more than 6 billion pesos. The assets, as stated in the report by Buenaventura, were 19 billion pesos. These figures are more than enough to pay for the 11 billion pesos debt claimed by the banks. I have here the papers of the rehabilitation plan submitted to the SEC. For those not familiar with what a corporate rehabilitation is, it is one that is intended to help a troubled company to gain back and continue its business to its normal operation. It is not intended to close and liquidate a company. In this rehabilitation plan, it indicates that the company had bank debt as of May 1999. And here is a contradicting affidavit coming from the company's executive vice president, Bienvenido Arao. According to this affidavit, Bienvenido Arao, the executive vice president of Uniwide Holdings, UHI, did not have any loan agreement with any bank. He never received any letter from any bank with any purported loan by UHI. Issue number four. How can a bank loan happen if there's no approval from its board of directors and stockholders? According to Mr. Gao, this is again a part of the demolition job to make it appear that Uniwide was already bankrupt. Is it really possible to declare fictitious bank loans? What's the purpose of this? Who are the people capable of doing these anomalies? Issue number five. 
If you will remember, there was a financial crisis in 1997. According to Mr. Gao, during the financial crisis in 1997, all banks were ordered by the central bank to stop accepting any new bank loan application. Why is it then that these banks were claiming that Uniwide had outstanding loans from them in 1999? And look at this. Some of these banks who are declaring that Uniwide had bank loans are also stockholders of Uniwide Holdings. Issue number six. If Uniwide had loans from these banks and these banks thought that Uniwide was not doing good in business, why then would they buy shares of Uniwide Holdings? Here's another interesting event that happened in the filing of this so-called rehabilitation plan. The petition was filed on June 25, 1999. It was approved by Perfecto Yasai Jr., chairman of the SEC, by June 29, 1999. So, filed on June 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. In just four days, the rehab plan was approved. I would say that's a fast approval, considering the bulk of papers and documents to be reviewed. Issue number seven. Why did the SEC chairman Perfecto Yasai Jr. approve the rehabilitation plan so fast? According to Mr. Gao, the reason why they approved the rehab plan that fast is because if the submission fell on year 2000, then the rehab plan would have been handled by the court, which means that the SEC would have no control over the proceedings. Issue number eight. Why is the SEC Receivership Committee so interested in handling the case? According to Mr. Gao, his experience in dealing with the SEC's Receivership Committee was like he had no control anymore on whatever the SEC's decision regarding his properties were. On March 6, 2000, the Receivership Committee presented the first amendment to the rehab plan, highlighted by the entry of French retailer Casino Guichard Perachon, which committed to invest 3.57 billion pesos. The amendment calls for the total repayment of all loans via combination of Dacion and Pago and cash payment at a discount. Let's check this French retailer, Casino Guichard Perachon. Casino Guichard Perachon SA is one of the leading food retailers in France and abroad with a portfolio of multi-format banners ranging from giant hypermarkets to casino shops to Vival Superettes. Casino, in France, provides a specific quality response to each type of customer and shopping need. It states here that Casino Richard Perachon committed to infuse 3.57 billion to support the rehabilitation of Uniwide. In return, he would get retail stores in 10 locations, five local banks, real estate ownership and leasehold rights on the operating assets. Equity investment is 82.2% with UHI owning 100% of both the new retail company and the new realty company. Basically, Casino will get almost 100% of Uniwide's business and properties with the amount of only 3.57 billion pesos. Do you think that's fair? Here's a big mystery. According to the article in Business Mirror, it was supposed to be a done deal already. But in January 2001, Casino suddenly left, even leaving behind around 60 million pesos in cash advances. 
Issue number nine. If the French retail store operator had already agreed on the deal as presented by the committee, what happened behind the scenes that caused him to leave? According to Mr. Gao, the French retailer discovered that Uniwide would not get even a single centavo in the said deal. The family stores. According to Mr. Gao, in year 2000, also sold all 44 branches of Uniwide family stores for only 3 million pesos per branch, including all the inventory. Mr. Gao invested more than 1 billion pesos for these stores. All these things happened because Mr. Gao, the owner of Uniwide, placed his full trust where he took full control of the business with nobody to countercheck. Mr. Gao, after repeatedly reading and analyzing the official documents related to the company that were released after a trial court ordered UHI's liquidation in 2016, couldn't help but come to the realization that Uniwide and its 27,000 stockholders were a victim of an organized fraud.